My name is Ashley Kelly, and I'll be bringing you the Endgame Rio 2016 YouTube series by the athlete for the athlete. Every athlete has a story. They all have a different struggle, but they all have the same goal. And this year, the Endgame is Rio. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time that you're watching, then welcome. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you get a chance to catch up on my past videos. It's been a while since my last episode, but a lot of things have been going on and I've been kind of busy. I recently qualified for the Indoor World Championships and I'm really excited about representing my country at a major championship. I also got a chance to compete in the Mirrors Game 60 meter dash against a stacked field. And it was a really great experience. I really wish I got some coverage, but it's really hard to compete and cover it at the same time. So, and it was a little bit hectic down in the media pit. So even though I didn't get any really good coverage from the Mirrors Games, I did get a chance to sit down with Samantha Edwards, the Antigua and Barbuda 200 and 400 meter national champ. And she also recently got engaged at the Mirrors Games. So to hear more about her race at the Mirrors Games, her indoor qualifier, and her engagement, stay tuned. 2016 is shaping up to be a great year for you. You already PR'd and qualified for the World Indoor Championships in the 400, and you set two national records for Antigua and Bermuda in yeah. the 500. Um, how do you feel about this year, and what do you think is con con contributing to your success? Um, well, this year has been a great year for me. Um, great things have taken place, as you said. Um, definitely, this is my second year with the coach that I have now, and definitely they always say the second year is when you know you do great things with the new coach. So I think that definitely contributed to my success. So you are a national champion in Division Two. You've been around the game for a while. Mm -hmm. What do you think helps motivate you and keeps you motivated to go out every day? Well, um, definitely uh, my accomplishments in college, of course. And not only that, but just see my accomplishments that I've done thus far. So that definitely pushes me to go out there and work even harder than where I was before. Of course, 2016 is Olympic year. What, if any, has changed in your mental game? Um, in my mental game, wow, definitely everyone knows, all athletes know that it's the big year, like you said, and um, definitely want to make the Olympic team, definitely want to go out there and not only make it in the first round, but make it out of the first round, but definitely see how far I can go, second round, final round, so, I mean, definitely staying focused and having that edge and going out there and doing what I have to do to make it through. Okay, so, in 2012, you qualified for the USATF um, Olympic Trials. Yes. What, if anything, did you learn from that experience and what are you taking into this year now that you can represent the Antigua and Bermuda? Well, taking into consideration the 2012 USATF, um, definitely wasn't easy being there in Oregon where it took place. I didn't make it out the first round, mm -hmm. um, but being there, seeing the experience, knowing what I have to do at this level now definitely helps me at this point to get to where I want to be. So, definitely a great experience being there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you made your first coaching change um, since you were in high in college. Yes. Not only did you make a coaching change, but you also moved back to New York. Yes. And it's a new environment, anything. Yes. So I have three questions to this. Okay. What influenced your decision? Okay. What is your relationship like now with your current coach and the environment that you're in? Uh -huh. And how has it contributed to your success? Okay. So what influenced my decision was the first question. Um, pretty much just coming back home, I mean, College, college, my college coach is a great coach, but I feel like at a certain level it, it's time for a change. So I decided to take that leap of faith and trust in this coach that I have now and everything's working well. So, I mean, moving back home, of course, um, cheaper, I don't have to have my own place. So that also influenced my decision to come back home. Um, what was the second question? I'm sorry. What is your, describe your relationship with them, with him and the environment that you're in now. Okay, um, relationship with my coach, very good relationship. Um, great coach. Um, compared to how I was running in the pro stage with my college coach, I definitely made some big changes this year with him, with my new coach. So he definitely brought me a far, a long way with this um, new coaching series and him coaching me. Um, so I could say our relationship was pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, so and 2016 is definitely shaping up to be a great year for you. Yes. Not only on the track, but in your personal life as well. Mm -hmm. And you recently got engaged. Yes. And he proposed at the Mirrors Game Flash the Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this describe the events leading up to it. Describe your race that day and just the feeling in that moment. Okay, so first of all, I didn't know he was even going to propose to me that day. I had no clue. Um, I was at the Merrill's Games. My main focus was to go out there, run fast, and 
get top three, which I did, thank God. The time wasn't what I wanted, but I mean, these things happen due to other circumstances. But, um, you know, I was there, the vibe was nice, I was just ready to go out there and compete. And all of a sudden, towards the end of my race, uh, my boyfriend at the time uh, proposed to me, and it was, it was a great, it was a great day. Got top three and got proposed to, so I couldn't ask for anything else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so a number of women, not only in the sport, feel like they have to sacrifice to either have a successful career or mm -hmm. a successful relationship. Mm -hmm. What, if anything, do you experience when you um, balance your personal life and your professional life? And what can you, what advice can you give women who also face that kind of situation? Well, for me per se, I mean, you have to focus on the goal or the task at hand. I mean, yes, we all have our personal lives, which everyone is allowed to have. At the same time, if you do have a goal or something you want to accomplish, that should be the first thing on your list. So, I mean, you can have a personal life. We all have personal lives. We're all human. But at the same time, if you do have a goal that you want to set or a goal that you have, go for it. Don't let anything else hinder you from that. Okay. Training full time, um, what is like the biggest hurdle that you currently or have experienced in the Okay, so a lot of people don't know this about me, but I do have the sickle cell trait. Um, it's not the full-blown sickle cell, it's just the trait, but I do experience sometimes where I do go through a crisis, which is mainly when I have um, cramping issues, if I exert myself too much. Mainly, I just have to stay hydrated as much as I can, which I try to stay on top of. It's not that easy, but um, that could, that's the main hurdle. Sometimes it could be a pain in the neck, and it's pretty painful, but I mean, at the end of the day, I have to do what I have to do. So if you can take yourself, step outside of your body mm -hmm. when you're experiencing something like that, or mm -hmm. if you have someone that looks up to you or a fan or something, mm -hmm. what advice would you give them if they have that similar trait or if they experience that kind of discomfort? I would say to them, pain is only temporary. I mean, yes, you might go through it in that moment, but at the end of the day, you have to remember or tell yourself, like, this is not going to last forever. This is something that happens. Sometimes you can't help it, but at the end of the day, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So. Just keep on fighting on. Action. <laughs> Alright, so switching the conversation back to indoor worlds. Mm -hmm. And it's like 16 days away. I know! Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what are you doing to prepare for Portland? And how do you feel about it so far? Oh gosh. Well, training is training's going very well. Um, coaches making sure we're very sharp. We're doing what we have to do to get to where we have to be. Once again, make it out the first round. And, um... Everything is going well. I'm very excited about Portland. Um, it's in the U.S. this year, so we don't have to go that far. Um, so I expect great things and leave it all in God's hands at the end of the day. Of course. Yeah. Okay, so last but not least, we're going to do a rapid fire questions. Ten questions. Okay. Just give me the first answer off the top of your head. Okay? Woo. Okay. You ready? Yes. <laughs> scared. All right. Okay. 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 Indoor or outdoor track? Indoor. Weight room or running? Wait room. Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. <laughs> Dinner in a movie or outdoor activity date? Outdoor activity date. Abs or planks? Abs. Favorite food? Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a superpower, what would it be? Be invisible. Okay. Reality TV or scripted series? Reality. Ratchet. <laughs> uh, Beyonce or Rihanna? Rihanna. <laughs> 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 Must have song on your playlist. Oh gosh, that's a tough one. Tough one. Jeez. A song? Could it just be a genre? Okay, genre. Soka music. Yeah, yes, I like it. Full of soca. Yes, yes, yes. My name is Samantha Edwards, and Tegan Barbuda, 400 meter national champion, and the end game is Rio. End of the day, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, so just keep on fighting on. <laughs>